What are the most impressive title wins in UFC history? We've seen plenty of impressive and inspiring performances in title fights, but I'm here to figure out which title win ranks the highest, and there are only a few. And the criteria that I'm using is simple. Number one, these title wins have to be over stiff competition. I'm talking about guys that were on a tear at the time, former champions that had multiple title defenses going into the fight, or men that are currently considered to be all-time greats. And two, these title wins needed to be dominant, either total one-sided beatdowns or decisions that were complete and skillful shutdowns. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What are the most impressive UFC title wins of all time? The first fight that we are going to look at is George St. Pierre's win over Matt Hughes in their rematch. We're going to throw it back to 2006 for the old heads, and we're going to go with the fight that basically kicked off the GSP era. We all consider this guy the second best fighter to ever do it. Well, this is his best title win, in my opinion. That's right. He knocked out Matt Hughes in their rematch with a head kick in the second round. Now, why was this fight so special? Well, George was only 25 years old at the time, and again, he had lost to Matt Hughes in their first fight. He had gotten finished by Matt Hughes, and Hughes was not only smack dab in the middle of his prime at 33 years old, but he also had nine title wins. This was like the baddest dude in the UFC at the time. He was 16-2 and two in his last 18 fights going into the rematch with GSP. So imagine you're a 25-year-old GSP, you have no title wins under your belt, you've lost to this guy, and you have to avenge that loss. That's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And he went in there and completely mopped the floor with him, hurt him badly in the first round, beat him up on the ground, and then came out in the second round and landed that beautiful head kick. And again, this is what kicked off GSP's like era, basically. And GSP did lose to Matt Serra after this fight, but nonetheless, this has to be his most impressive title win because Matt Hughes is one of the best welterweights to ever do it. And at the time was probably like that guy in the UFC, the best UFC fighter in the world. This is it for GSP. Kamaru Usman versus Tyron Woodley 2019, 50 44. That's right, a total domination from Kamaru Usman. This is one of the best title wins I've ever seen in my life. So why was this so special? Well, Woodley was not only a four-time defending champion, but people had this idea that anything that Kamaru could do, Woodley could do better. Kamaru Usman was a good wrestler, a D2 wrestler. Well, Woodley was D1 and had some of the best takedown defense in the UFC. He was like a brick wall. And in most people's minds, there was no way Kamaru Usman was going to go in there and out-wrestle him. And because Usman didn't have crazy knockout power and he wasn't that great of a striker, people thought that Woodley was just going to run through him on the feet, that Woodley would stuff the takedowns and land that overhand and put Kamaru Usman's lights out, that this was a pretty tailor-made matchup for him. And what did Usman do? Usman racked up 18 minutes of control time and outlanded Woodley 141 to 39 on significant strikes. He completely and utterly dominated Tyron Woodley everywhere the fight went. It looked like Woodley had seen a ghost in this fight. He was completely broken after the first round and Kamaru Usman just totally weaponized his pace and took that takedown defense stat of Tyron Woodley and shoved it up his ass. Basically said, bro, I don't give a shit if you're a D1 wrestler, I'm going to run through you regardless. You stuffing all those takedowns from Damian Maya isn't going to deter me from marching you down and imposing my will. And that's what made this such an impressive fight. Woodley just had nothing for Kamaru and Usman just imposed his will the entire fight, slamming Woodley down, beating his ass on the ground, beating him up badly in the clinch. And Woodley was just always on the defensive, had no ability to create any offensive exchanges because Kamaru Usman's pressure was so solid in this fight. Once again, I don't think anyone expected Kamaru Usman to go in there and completely mop the floor with the dominant champion Tyron Woodley. And going into this fight, a lot of people were thinking of Woodley as the next guy that could potentially pass up GSP. Now, he wasn't that close, but nonetheless, he was talked about as being the second greatest welterweight. So for Usman to go out there and completely just ragdoll 
this guy that was touted as having amazing takedown defense is just gnarly so i have to put this up there as one of the most impressive title wins i'm sure that you guys anticipated this one john jones versus daniel cormier the first fight a complete classic the build up to this is what originally made me a bit of a fan of mma this was the first fight that i actually got hyped for as an mma fan and it delivered there was a lot of build up to this a lot of trash talk we're going back to 2015. So why was this so special? Well, Daniel Cormier was undefeated going into this matchup and he was an Olympic wrestler. So we're looking at a guy in John Jones that has a wrestling base that likes to out grapple people. Well, now he's actually going to be fighting someone that is a higher level wrestler than anyone that he's ever faced. That's a higher level wrestler than him. And guess what? Not only was DC undefeated at the time, he was dominating everyone and he was in his prime. And what did Jones do? He not only out wrestled Daniel Cormier, but he out dirty boxed him too. We know that John Jones likes to fight his opponents where they're at their best. And this was the epitome of that because Jones went for the takedown aggressively. He took Daniel Cormier down three times and outstruck him 92 to 58 on significant strikes. And when I'm saying he outstruck him, a lot of that was in close range in that dirty boxing clinch. And that's where DC thrives. So John Jones basically took four out of five rounds. I believe he only lost the third round and that was it. It may have been the second round that he lost, but either way, John Jones completely shut him down in the championship rounds and uh, just broke Daniel Cormier and tired him out. I really do favor these like dominant decision wins because sometimes it's great to see an early KO, but when you can prove that you're just better than someone everywhere, especially a high level opponent like Daniel Cormier that's touted to be one of the best fighters to ever do it throughout the majority of 25 minutes, like when you're in there for 25 minutes shutting someone down with skill, that is a definitive answer for me to let me know that that is the better guy. You are the better fighter. And John Jones couldn't have done a better job of proving that in this fight. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway won. That's right. I believe that Volk's first fight over Max Holloway is the most impressive win that he has. Now, a lot of people would sit here and tell me that Volk's third win over Max is even better. But the thing is, though, he had two wins going into that fight over Max. And it's like, I prefer the one that you did when you were new and counted out and no one really knew who you were and you were just going into that fight dark. And this is the thing that made it so impressive. Volkanovski had no hype whatsoever going into this fight. He was completely overlooked. And Max Holloway was touted as being the second best featherweight of all time, right on the coattails of Jose Aldo, the only guy to beat Aldo twice. And he beat Aldo's ass in those fights. Max was 15 and one in his last 16 fights heading into this and had only recently lost to Dustin Poirier, which was a really close fight. And Max was also 28 years old. So he's basically in the middle of his prime. You know, he was coming off of a win over Frankie Edgar. And that win wasn't that impressive. And people were expecting Max to really get his groove back, you know, because he had just separated himself from the Dustin Poirier loss with a win. And Max just got completely shut down. And once again, I just want to remind you guys that no one was picking Alexander Volkanovsky to win this fight. Volk had an impressive performance against Jose Aldo. But for him to just go in there and completely shut down and school Max Holloway on the feet, not only with leg kicks, but with big overhand rights for the first four rounds was just incredibly impressive. And again, the reason why I think this is his best title win is because beating Max Holloway the first time is just something that seems insurmountable. Like we haven't seen anyone take out a prime Max Holloway in the featherweight division other than Volk. The second fight was close. The third fight was a domination. But once again, I feel like when Volk has that mental edge of beating Max Holloway multiple times, that kind of leads into a more dominant win for the third fight to begin with. For Volk to go out there and beat a guy in Max Holloway who's one of the best fighters to ever do it and to shut him down, just coming in dark. As I say, that's what I like to use to describe this fight. Volk just came in dark, like a special ops mission and stole that title from the hands of Max Holloway. Uh, I scored it 50-45 for Volkanovski, but you could make the argument that it's 49-46, that maybe Max Holloway won the fifth round at best. It was nuts. It was shocking. And it just came out of nowhere. Jan Blahovic and Israel Adesanya outstruck, outgrappled, and outclassed. In 2021, 
Why was this such a special win? Well, first off, Adesanya was undefeated in the UFC at the time, so Jan was the first guy to hand him a loss. And he was on a nine-fight win streak, and he had just had, like, the most emphatic win of his entire career over Paulo Costa, and he completely and utterly humiliated Costa. And a lot of people were picking Costa in that fight. People looked at Costa as this Goliath that just took out Yoel Romero. And he was supposed to go there and bulldoze Adesanya. And if Adesanya can destroy that guy, he can beat anyone. And before that, of course, he had a stinker with Yoel. But before that, he beat Robert Whitaker. So this just looked like a perfect matchup for Israel Adesanya to go in there and knock out the old man Jan Blahovich, who was 38 years old at the time and who had just only recently got the title. Jan outstruck Adesanya for three rounds and then took him down and beat him up on the ground in the last two. An arguable 50-45 clean sweep, complete outclassing from Jan Blahovich. And the most impressive thing to me was the defense of Jan. Like he was just unhittable. Adesanya could not graze this man's face for the first two rounds. The third round was close, I'll give that to Adesanya, but nonetheless, he still got outstruck. So you have three rounds getting outstruck where Adesanya is supposed to be the better striker, and then in the last two rounds, Jan Blahovich makes Adesanya think that this is going to be a striking battle, and then he level changes and takes Izzy down. Izzy was probably expecting Jan Blahovich to level change early. Jan's game plan, Jan's fight IQ was just amazing in this fight to make that happen in the later rounds instead. And he outlanded Adesanya 107 to 79 on significant strikes. And given that Adesanya is one of the best fighters to ever do it, man, this is just an amazing win. And it wasn't just the size. Once again, the guy just got outskilled on the feet. He got outclassed. And I feel like Jan doesn't get enough respect for this win. So you have the criteria of him beating an all-time great in Israel, Adesanya, a dominant guy, and you have the criteria of him just outclassing him for every single round. And you know what? Let's show Israel Adesanya some respect because I am going to respect that win that he has over Robert Whitaker, who is, in my opinion, one of the best middleweights to ever do it. I think that Whitaker's the third best middleweight of all time, and Adesanya made him look like an absolute fool on the feet. Basically KO'd this man twice once at the end of the first round and once at the end of the second round just put a complete and utter beating on him with those beautiful counter shots and once again like Whitaker was on a nine fight win streak and was basically unbeaten in the middleweight division he had lost only early on in his career when he was a welterweight and he was not only on a nine fight win streak but Whitaker was going through the murderer's row with guys like Jacare and guys like Brunson and Yoel Romero when they were all in their prime and the idea was that you know, if Kelvin Gaslam can put a beating on Israel Adesanya and land a lot of damage, then Whitaker, the guy that survived Yoel twice, would be durable enough to take whatever Adesanya has to dish out, and he would do a better job than Kelvin Gaslam. And Adesanya just completely schooled him, and once again, just made him look like a fool, which is crazy, and this win has also aged well, because even after this, Whitaker went on to win three fights in a row over Darren Till, Jared Kennanier, and Kelvin Gaslam. And sure, he lost to Adesanya in the rematch, which was a very close fight, but then he won again over Marvin Vittori. So it's like you're, you're taking out a guy that just, if he keeps winning, could go on to be the second best middleweight of all time. Like Whitaker and Izzy both have potential to maybe pass up Anderson Silva because they're both young. So this is an amazing win from Adesanya. I know people like to give me crap because I'm not a big Adesanya fan, but I've always said that this win is incredible and it deserves to be up here. Because once again, the criteria fits perfectly. Islam Makashev versus Charles Oliveira. We have all seen this one. This was a painful one for me because I was really riding hard for my guy Charles. And I just didn't see this one coming because Charles Oliveira was supposed to go in there in my eyes and nullify Islam on the ground and outstrike him. Because think about it like this. Charles just sent Gagey flying across the octagon. Charles just walked down Dustin Poirier and kind of broke him in the clinch in the first round. And he knocked out Michael Chandler. And we didn't really see a lot of Islam Makhachev striking, and it looked pretty basic and simple. He looked in no way, shape, or form like a dangerous man on the feet. And Charles was also on an 11-fight win streak in the lightweight division and was probably a win away from becoming the lightweight GOAT if he were to beat a guy that was similar to Habib. And Islam just went out there, dominated Charles on the feet, and submitted him. And to submit the guy that's the submission king, someone that has the most finishes in UFC history, is incredible. Once again, taking out the second best lightweight to ever do it. 
in this kind of fashion where you completely outstrike him and kind of humiliate him a little bit on the feet. I mean, think about it. Every time Charles tried to close the distance, he would get countered with like massive thudding shots from Islam Makhachev and he got dropped in the second round. Now the grappling was close and that was to be expected. But what surprised everyone was the striking. People expected Charles to be the one with that advantage and it turned out to be Islam. So I have to say this is one of the most impressive title wins ever. And uh, of course, Charles just doesn't have a style that's going to allow you to go to the distance with him. He's going to get the finish or you're going to get the finish. And this win has only aged better since Charles got a win over Benil Dariush, since Charles was able to bounce back. And we just know that he is by far the second best lightweight in the division right now. And there's really no one else that's even close to him. So for Islam to put a bit of a distance between him and Charles in this fight, Man, that's just crazy. It just really goes to show you how good he is. Dominic Reyes versus John Jones beating up the GOAT 2020. Guys, let's cut the bullshit. Dominic Reyes won this fight. And I understand there are some people already rushing to the keyboards to type. He did. He beat him fairly and squarely for the first three rounds. He outstruck him. And nobody expected Dominic Reyes to go in there and basically pop John Jones's head around like a pinball machine. And 100%, I understand that John Jones is the best fighter to ever do it, but this was a complete robbery. And Reyes was supposed to just be another lamb being led to the slaughter, completely counted out. People were saying, as usual, Jones by any way he wants. And instead, John Jones had the toughest fight of his entire life. Reyes outstruck him handily in those first three rounds and just got brutally robbed. And the fact that you fairly and squarely beat John Jones in those first three rounds, in the mind of anyone that is thinking logically without any bias. You just did that to the best fighter to ever do it that was still in his early 30s, which is just crazy. So I have to give Dominic Reyes some respect for that. I don't care if he didn't get his hand raised. That was an injustice. And I think that the majority of us can at least admit that. So Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman 2. 49-46 absolute schooling. And why is this more impressive? Well, people assume that because Leon got lucky with the head kick, that's what some people were saying, let's be real, Kamara was supposed to go in there and right the wrong and pick up right where he left off, which was beating Leon Edwards for the majority of the fight. <laughs> Don't let it bully you, son! And if Usman were to play it safe and not get KO'd, he was supposed to win. And Leon put that to bed because he didn't need the KO, he didn't get the KO, he didn't really even rock Usman that bad in this fight, aside from one moment where he landed a knee to his face. And despite all of that, he basically schooled Kamaru and shut down the wrestling completely, tore his legs up to shreds with oblique kicks and hard leg kicks, being the first guy to really hurt Usman's wobblestone, cobblestone knees, right? Usman's always talking about those bad knees. Edwards has such a fast leg kick that he can throw it and not worry about Usman catching it because again, he's just so fast. And the only reason why this wasn't a 50-45 on the scorecards is because Leon had a point deducted in this fight because I believe that he grabbed the cage. But other than that, he won every round and just completely nullified Usman. A lot of people were saying that Usman was different. Mentally, he wasn't the same, but in reality, it was just that Edwards didn't gas out and he didn't give Usman an opportunity to pin him up against the fence because every time Usman would try to pressure Edwards up against the fence, you'd see Edwards move around the cage laterally. And he had this really fast and urgent movement to get away from the fence every time Kamara would try to close the distance. And that's why he was able to just outstrike him at range and shut down the wrestling. So I have to say, man, this was just a complete masterclass from Leon Edwards. He really did look like a sniper out there and showcased how well-rounded he was and to beat Kamaru Usman, who everyone was saying, you only beat because of that lucky shot and to shut him down is amazing. BJ Penn versus Matt Hughes, another amazing title win where he submitted him in the first round. We're throwing it back to 2004. And why is this so special? Well, first off, BJ was only 26 years old and Matt Hughes was only 31. So the guy is basically in his prime. BJ was submitting a two-time NCAA Division I All-American, you know? So that is an incredible wrestler that you're out grappling, that you're out scrambling to take his neck. And most impressively was the fact that Matt Hughes was on a six-fight win streak 
all of them being title wins. So for a young BJ Penn to sneak in there and submit a much bigger guy in Matthews, remember, at the end of BJ's career, this guy was competing against Ryan Hall in the featherweight division. And this is at the welterweight division. So it's just crazy that he was beating a much bigger guy that was in his prime that had this wrestling credential of being D1 All-American. It's just an amazing win and you have to give it some respect. People wonder why BJ Penn is one of the all-time best lightweights to ever do it or, or you know, one of the all-time greats to ever do it. Well, this is one of those examples of why he is so great. Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo, 2015, the 13 second KO. This is probably just the most perfect, most beautiful finish I've ever seen. If you want to combine the buildup and just the storyline and the aura McGregor had, a perfect example of prime Conor McGregor, just making something happen that no one thought was possible. Everyone was picking Jose Aldo to win this fight, or at least the majority of analysts were picking Jose Aldo to win this fight. And to be the first guy to beat Jose Aldo in this kind of fashion, where you not only beat him, but you knock him out. And this was a killer like Aldo, who was known for outstriking people, that was known for being incredibly fast and explosive and powerful. And to put him out in 13 seconds with one shot, when he's on a 15 fight win streak, 10 of them being title wins is insane. And again, I am not always that impressed with a KO early on rather than like an outclassing or a complete schooling throughout five rounds. But come on, you have to put this on the list. This is just insane. All right, guys. So I've just went through my list for the most impressive title wins, and I'm going to rank my top five. And I also want you to let me know out of the ones that I discussed, which title wins do you think are the most impressive? Give me your top five in the comments. Let me know down below. My top five. Number one is gonna be John Jones defeating Daniel Cormier. Number two is gonna be Alexander Volkanovsky defeating Max Holloway. Number three is gonna be GSP taking out Matt Hughes. Number four is Dominic Reyes defeating John Jones. Even though it wasn't dominant, I still believe that beating the greatest fighter to ever do it clearly is incredibly impressive, especially when John Jones was still in his early 30s. And number five is Islam Makhachev just schooling Charles Oliveira on the feet and beating him up and submitting the submission king. That's in my top five as well. So again, guys, everyone that got defeated on this list, I have a ton of respect for. Like that's what makes these wins so great. It's because the guys that are losing are some of the best to ever do it. You know what I'm talking about? That's why it's so special. Amazing title fights, all of them. And these are what I believe are the best title wins ever. And John Jones sits there at number one, which is no surprise as to why people call him the GOAT. Uh, and now I'm gonna give some honorable mentions. Weidman versus Anderson Silva won. Of course, Chris Weidman knocked him out in that fight. But Anderson Silva was just acting like a fool. And I understand that Weidman won the first round and, and he took that clearly. But again, Anderson was completely disrespecting him and emoting around the cage. What did you expect? So I, I just feel like that's not the best example of Anderson Silva actually trying. DC versus Stipe won another amazing title win from Daniel Cormier to defeat Stipe Miocic. Uh, after Stipe was coming off of one of his best ever title wins over Francis Ngannou. So another title win that I need to discuss, that's one of them. And Cejudo versus Demetrius Johnson too. Uh, you could also put in Cejudo and Demetrius Johnson one, where Demetrius Johnson finished Henry Cejudo. I actually think that that is one of the best title wins of all time. And now that I'm mentioning it, I will say that that is one of the best title wins of all time. I'm sorry, guys, that I didn't put it in there. That should be in there. So I'm just going to put that out there. I should have put that on the list. That shouldn't be an honorable mention, and it's not even in the honorable mention. So yeah, Demetrius Johnson knocking out Henry Cejudo should be on this list. Uh, and then Cejudo versus DJ2 should be an honorable mention because it was a very close fight. It could have gone either way. It wasn't dominant, but it's still a legendary thing to surpass a guy like Demetrius Johnson and get your hand raised because Demetrius Johnson is one of the best fighters to ever do it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your top five best title wins ever are according to the criteria that I discussed. Until next time.